When you're building out your SaaS business, should you bootstrap or should you raise VC? Should you go raise a big round up front or should you do a pre-seed round or maybe you don't quite quit your job and build out the product first? How do you do it? Now, here's what I learned. Picking between bootstrapping and going VC is actually an illusion. It's a complete illusion. It's actually not a real choice. In fact, there's really only one way to build a successful B2B SaaS business, in my opinion. And having done both, I learned the hard way what the right approach is. In today's episode, I'm gonna walk you through the three principles you absolutely need to know to figure out the best funding strategy for your SaaS business in order to increase the likelihood of success. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS businesses faster with an unstoppable strategy. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon because I drop an episode like this with actionable strategies and tactics to drive growth three times a week. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon, and that way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK energy. If you're already part of our community, our really fast growing community, by the way, thank you for being part of this community. If you're part of my SaaS go-to-market coaching program, welcome back. Super awesome to have you here, seriously. Now, I wanna talk about how to build a SaaS business and what the right funding strategy is. When I did my very first SaaS business, I was in college, we built a company called HipCal. We spent money on $75, basically that's all we spent. We took over a room in our fraternity house, me and my co-founders. I think like Garrett, who was the primary founder, sold his textbooks to fund the server, which was $75 a year. We completely bootstrapped it. We were in upstate New York. We didn't know any better. There were no angel investors. We didn't know what an angel investor was. Web 2.0 was happening. It was 2006. So we just bootstrapped the company. We scaled it to thousands of users. We won an award at South By. We didn't know what South By Interactive was, and we didn't have money to go get tickets to go there, but we were killing it. And then by the time we graduated, we got bought out. We sold the company to a Silicon Valley company and we graduated and moved to Silicon Valley and got a house in Los Altos Hills. Can't make this stuff up. That's literally what happened. We were bootstrapped. TownApp was also bootstrapped. That was my last SaaS business. I bootstrapped it first. We got to cash flow break even, and then I raised seed funding. Now through this journey, one of the things I realized is the whole raise a lot of money and then go figure out what you're going to do is actually an illusion and generally leads to failure. It doesn't create enough constraints. It sets too much expectation. A lot of times you can't even raise that money. And so the question is, what is the right funding strategy for your SaaS business so that in you can increase the likelihood of success, both in terms of fundraising and also in terms of just getting the product market fit. So in this episode, I'm gonna walk you through the three principles you absolutely need to know to have your one golden funding strategy so that you're more likely to succeed. If you're excited to dig in, go ahead and smash that like button and let's dig into principle number one. So principle number one is bootstrap first, keep burn low. That's it, it's as simple as that. Don't raise a ton of money. Don't sell 20% of your company right off the bat. Because here's the thing, the longer you can wait until you fundraise, the more the value of your company is gonna go up. The reason the value of your company is gonna go up is because there are more things that you're gonna de-risk. If you can figure out the market, the risk goes down, you know what the market is. If you can figure out and point to the urgent, important problem that has budget, then risk goes down even more and the more people will pay. If you can figure out how to generate revenues with a go-to-market machine early, get, get distribution right early, then even more risk goes down and therefore your valuation goes up and up and up. And so it's in your best interest to bootstrap first. You don't have to be a bootstrap business. You don't have to be a small TAM business. All those negative things that come with when I say bootstrap, even though it shouldn't, it's for another video. But if you bootstrap it first, it'll force you to figure out what actually matters. You'll keep your burn low. You'll really get to the urgent, important, with budget problem. You'll figure out how to monetize it. You'll figure out how to get the distribution. And then you can go in for a raise. But at that point, you're gonna have a little bit of swagger. You're gonna have a little bit of like, we know what we're doing, we know what's working, and we wanna double down on it. And that's the kind of deal that VCs get really, 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 really excited about, regardless of where you're coming from, regardless of your pedigree. They will look at it and they'll say, there's something really here, we want in on this, and they'll be begging you to take their money. So I always say principle number one is bootstrap first. Is it harder? Yes. But does it increase the likelihood of success? 110%. Go look at the stats. Go look at the companies that raised three, five, 10, 20 million upfront right off the bat. 
they're more likely to fail than the companies that kept burn low and really, really honed in on the market, the product, and the go-to-market, and then went on to raise. And the companies that actually raise less tend to do better in the long run. So principle number one, I stand by it, bootstrap first. Principle number two is as you start to bootstrap and hone in on your market strategy, your product strategy, your go-to-market strategy, you should do all three of these. As you start to hone in on these three things, the biggest question you should be asking yourself is the TAM. How big can the TAM get? TAM is total addressable market. Now, if you don't know how to calculate your TAM, I did an entire video on this, you can check it out here. You don't have to go right now, I'll link to it below. Just watch it after this video. You should calculate your TAM. There are different ways to do it, there are effective ways to do it. When you calculate your TAM, it'll tell you how big the market is. If it's a small to medium sized market, you're gonna be better off just staying bootstrapped or looking at alternative sources of funding. If it's a massive market and there's a land grab and there's gonna be a first mover advantage and there's gonna be competitors and it's the one that actually gets a lion's share is gonna win and they're gonna be number one and they're gonna be a billion dollar company, then you should raise VC. If it's not the case, then you shouldn't raise VC. And the thing that I always tell founders to do is do the math, particularly in B2B SaaS, which is what this channel is really about, do the math. A successful, profitable bootstrap software company can generate millions, for, millions for founders. Whereas a VC-backed company in the early stages will pay you 300K with an upside of potential equity value down the line, but the risk is way higher. So do the math and figure out whether your TAM warrants VC. Seriously, do the math. So you can start to understand, do you have the TAM to support a VC-backed investment? Are you gonna be better off bootstrapping it or continuing to bootstrap it and taking profits out of that business? Or are you gonna be better off raising VC, selling a portion of your stock, maybe doing a secondary? You'll have to figure all that out, but TAM is the big thing to actually dig into. This will answer whether VC is even worth it for what you're going after. And again, more and more in B2B SaaS today, you don't have to be VC to be a wildly profitable, successful, wealthy founder. You just don't, which is the crazy part. And VCs don't really want you to know that, but I'm not a VC, so I can tell you that. Now, before I go into the third principle, let me just pause here for a second. If you're starting to see some power in this, of this golden funding strategy, which creates optionality for you as the founder, helps you figure out what the best path to wealth is for you, what the best path to impact is for you. If you're starting to see the difference in the thinking here, can I just get a yes in the comments below? We love hearing from you. We love doing these videos. We love hearing from you, our community members. So hit me with a yes and tell me what you're thinking. And also while you're at it, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. The YouTube algorithm really likes it when you smash that like button. And so does our team and me. All right, let's go to principle. Oh, before I talk about principle number three, one more thing. If you're at that stage where you're building out your SaaS business and you're trying to get the strategy right, including your funding strategy, your product strategy, your market strategy, your go-to-market strategy, I invite you to download my five-point SaaS growth strategy guide. In it, I give you all the resources you need to create a one-page strategy, additional videos you can watch to really make sure you get the strategy right for your SaaS business to drive growth. Completely free, I'll tell you more about it at the end of this video. Let's go to principle number three. Principle number three is if you're gonna go the VC route, don't just think about the next funding round, think about T2, D3. T2, D3 is the shortcut to most successful SaaS businesses. T2, D3 means triple, triple, double, double, double. The best SaaS businesses that got to a billion in, in valuation, they followed this model, T2, D3. Triple, triple, double, double, double. The triple revenues, then the triple revenues, then the double revenues, double revenues, double revenues. And so if you're gonna get on this VC treadmill, this is something that you have to commit to. Again, do the math. Does the TAM support for you to actually be able to triple, triple, double, double, double? And what that means is you're gonna triple your revenues year one that you raise VC. You're gonna triple it again. You're gonna then double, then you're gonna double again, and then you're gonna double again and you get to a billion valuation. And you're gonna do the fundraises to make sure you can fund this growth not profitably. I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm not saying this to discourage you. I'm saying this to give you this one principle. If you go the VC route, awesome. If you're in a large TAM, you can have tremendous impact. You can be the next Salesforce, the next Zendesk, the next HubSpot, awesome. Now, don't just think about this next fundraise. Just take a step back, just for five seconds, even, even if just for five seconds, and think about what it's gonna take to do T2, D3, because because if you do that, then you're just gonna be that much stronger. You're gonna think about, okay, I need to do this fundraise and using this fundraise, I need to go this. And after that, I need to do this. Does the TAM still work? What kind of team members am I gonna need? Okay, got it. That's my big play. Now let's zoom in and look at this next fundraise. But if you think about this and you think about the overall roadmap, 
you're gonna go into this next fundraise from a position of context, from a position of clarity, and you're gonna understand what the bigger picture is, and that's super, super important. So that's my three principles around the golden strategy for B2B SaaS businesses, which is what I love, and I talk about a lot in this channel. Number one, bootstrap first, keep burn low, get to the urgent, important problem that has budget, get to the distribution, get the go-to-market right, start go-to-market early. Second, figure out your TAM and determine if you should raise VC. Do the math. Do the math on what it's gonna look like for a bootstrap business generating profits in the millions for you as a founder and do the math on uh, raising VC and going after the VC route. And if you do go the VC route, then figure out what it's gonna take for you to T2, D3, triple, triple, double, 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 and what the fundraises are gonna be like, what the growth is gonna be like, and what the next 10 years of your life is gonna be like. That's kind of how to plan it out. Just plan it out for, for like even, if just take an hour to plan it out, it'll give you the context, and you can make the best decision as you go forward. Those are my three principles around how to build out the funding strategy for your SaaS business. If you got value from this video, be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. I drop an episode like this three times a week, so be sure to that subscribe button and that bell icon. Also, as I mentioned in the middle, I have my SaaS growth strategy guide, five point SaaS growth strategy guide. It will help you actually build out a one page strategy to grow your SaaS business across the key pillars that matter. The three most important pillars, market, product, go to market. And then it's funding strategy, which we talked about in this video, and exit strategy. And I have videos associated with all five of these pillars inside of that guide. I link to it. It'll help you build out your one page strategy. Just go to getunstoppable.com slash strategy to download. Lastly, if you have a fellow founder, if you're part of a WhatsApp group, if you have a team that's thinking through this with you, please share this with them. It will mean the world to us. Hit that like button and that subscribe button if you haven't already. And lastly, remember, Everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business, but when you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK, and I'll see you in the next episode.